The Welsh Government are the people responsible for looking after Wales as a country. In 2012, they introduced the Place Efficiency Duty and made Wales the first country in the world to have a law specifically aimed at making sure children have enough opportunities for play. They did this because they understand that play is central to children's enjoyment of life and is essential to their physical and emotional well-being and their healthy development. However, they also recognise that some aspects of our modern society can limit children's time and space for play, and so they want more to be done to help create environments where children can freely play and encourage communities to be more play-friendly. Wrexham County Borough Council are the people responsible for looking after Wrexham as a county, and so one of our jobs is to make sure that children in Wrexham have enough opportunities to play. This new law comes in two parts. The first part meant that we needed to carry out an investigation to find out more about the opportunities for play currently available to children in Wrexham. Wrexham Council's play development team led on this piece of work in partnership with an expert from Glyndwr University and they involved more than 850 people in the process, including over 580 children and 130 parents and carers. The second part of this law then means that based on what we now know about play in Wrexham, we must take steps to secure enough opportunities for all children to play. This means that where the opportunities are already good enough, we need to make sure they stay that way. And where they're not good enough, we need to try and improve the situation. The rest of this presentation is about what we found out from completing Wrexham's first place efficiency assessment and the priorities we've identified for making things better. What is enough? Play is key to people's enjoyment of life and therefore enough is when people say that they are satisfied with the opportunities available to them, when they feel like they have access to enough opportunities for play. We therefore came to understand enough as being the point at which people moved from a general sense of dissatisfaction, where many problems needed to be dealt with to improve their play, to a general sense of satisfaction, where they would only identify small improvements to the quality of their opportunities. Having enough opportunities for play depends on a wide range of factors, all of which can be grouped into three themes of time, space and attitudes. Time in terms of how children's time is structured and what else they have to do with it. Space in terms of the amount, range, quality and location of it. And attitudes in terms of the permission children are granted, what people expect of them and how people feel about their play. Having enough opportunities for play is a bit like making spaghetti bolognese. For a good bolognese, you need to mix all your ingredients together in the right amounts and at the right time. In a similar way, having enough opportunities for play isn't just about space or just about time or just about attitudes. It's about all these things working together because they all affect each other. For example, how you feel about your time for play will depend on the spaces you have access to during that time and the types of attitudes you experience in those spaces. We can only improve children's opportunities for play by addressing all of these issues together. The state of play. 70% of children in Wrexham rated their overall satisfaction with play as 7 or above out of 10, or alternatively good or great, and these children are identified as having access to enough opportunities for play because they identify little room for improvement. 20% of children then rated their satisfaction with play as OK but in need of improvements, or 5 or 6 out of 10. A further 10% of children rated their satisfaction as not good or rubbish, or below 5 out of 10. This means that more than 1 in 4 children are dissatisfied with their opportunities for play, and these children have been identified as experiencing a lack of opportunities for play. In comparison with the information provided by children, only 25% of parents rated their satisfaction with their children's opportunities for play as good or great, with 35% rating them as OK and a further 40% rating them as not good or rubbish. Time for play. Most children recognise that time when they are free to do as they choose best supports their play, and that time when they are told how to behave or act as least supportive of their play. However, two-thirds of children reported spending the majority of their time during term time in places that restrict or regulate their behaviour. 
In contrast, two-thirds of children reported having mostly free time when they can do as they choose during the school holidays. As a result, more children are dissatisfied with their time for play during term time than their time for play during school holidays. That brings us to our first priority, more time for play during term time. This could be achieved by increasing children's time for play between lessons in school or making sure other adult-led activities, homework and chores do not take up too much of children's free time outside of school. Our second priority is then about improving opportunities for playing in winter. Children and parents consistently report less time for play in winter due to it getting darker earlier and the colder weather. Whilst there isn't much we can do about the weather, this does suggest that we need to improve opportunities for play throughout the whole year, rather than just focusing on school holidays and the summer months. Space for play. One in four children are dissatisfied with the range of places they can play in, and 60% say there is room for improvement in the quality of the spaces available for play. Children value playing in a broad range of places, and it's important to recognise that some of these will be purposefully made for play, but others will not. Some will be man-made, but others will be natural, and some will involve adults, but many won't. However, the places children value most outside of their homes are not formally recognised as spaces for play, but instead are the streets where they live. Our third priority is about making streets safer for play. Children identify lighting, pavements, alleyways, cul-de-sacs and speed bumps among the features that support their free movement and play. Road safety, how close space for play is to homes and the need for more direct walking and cycling routes are important issues for all children and parents, but particularly those living in the more rural areas of Wrexham. Priority four is to secure a wider range of spaces for play. Children value having access to a variety of spaces in which they can have different types of play experiences. There also appears to be fewer problems linked to the attitudes of other people where children have access to a broader range of spaces for play. This is probably because these children have more choice about who they share space with and so find it easier to avoid awkward situations. Our fifth priority is about making sure there are spaces for play close to children's homes. For children and parents, the closeness of space to their homes is a major factor and this is probably why children place such a high value on playing in the streets near their homes. Priority 6 then focuses on improving the design of space for play. Children value flexible spaces that they can use and adapt in a variety of ways, which can incorporate both man-made and natural features, including trees for climbing, hills for rolling down, places for hiding and opportunities to build dens. Priority 7 is specifically about improving the range of provision available for teenagers or young people. Children and parents both said that by improving opportunities for teenagers, we can also help to create more space for younger children. Young people also reported a lack of welcoming public spaces and the need for cheaper public transport to help them get around. Attitudes for play. One in four children are dissatisfied with the attitudes towards their play that they experience. However, whenever we spoke to children, they had concerns about other people's attitudes and how these can restrict their play. For example, when asked about their time for play, children still talked about the attitudes they experienced during these times. Priority 8 is therefore about making children's experiences of time and space more playful. Children value activities run by adults both in and out of school. However, there are examples where these do not support play due to restrictions on the use of different spaces or a lack of permission for different types of play. By encouraging adults who design and deliver services for children to be more supportive and understanding of children's playful behaviour, we can improve how children feel about the time they spend within these spaces. Priority 9 focuses on increasing parents' permission for play. Parents have concerns about safety linked to the attitudes of other people, dogs and traffic. In some cases, these concerns are so severe that they can stop parents from allowing their children out to play. We therefore need to find ways of helping parents to feel more confident about their children's safety. Priority 10 is about improving support for disabled and marginalised children. The children who reported the lowest levels of satisfaction were more likely to be older and more than half of them said they did not play out at all 
despite being of an age at which most other children are playing out regularly. Furthermore, 40% described themselves as being disabled. It is therefore likely that the barriers to play these children experience are more severe than those experienced by most other children, and these children are therefore in need of additional support. Priority 11 aims to improve negative attitudes towards children and their play. We can't expect everyone to get on all of the time. However, across the majority of communities, children and parents reported experiencing negative attitudes towards children and their play. And it is this general feeling of not being welcome that we want to change. Finally, Priority 12 is specifically about improving people's attitudes towards young people. Younger children and parents were particularly concerned by the presence and behaviour of teenagers. However, when we spoke to young people, they were more concerned about being misunderstood by adults. What happens next? The individual actions we will now take to improve opportunities for play across Wrexham will change as our understanding of children's play develops and new challenges emerge. However, our general approach will focus on these 12 priorities and we will carry out a new place efficiency assessment every three years to review how we're getting on. In doing this, we'll try to make sure that any new plans developed by the Council are supportive of children's play and avoid putting further unnecessary restrictions on their free time and space. We'll also try to make sure that anyone working with or on behalf of children has a good understanding of play and how they can be more supportive of it. Finally, because of their knowledge and experience of supporting children's play, we recognise that play workers are people who can help communities and families identify and make the most of their local opportunities for play. Our hope is that by building on what we have learned from our place efficiency assessment and working together with other organisations and local communities, we can move towards a situation where all children in Wrexham have enough time, space and permission for play as part of their everyday lives. For more information, please visit www.wrexham.gov.uk play.